This is Adjuster TV, Adjusters First. Adjuster TV is brought to you by Adjuster TV Plus. We're gonna get started with the, the cons of using a drone for claims. And <clears throat> number one, I think the number one con is that carriers still are not totally on board with them. Uh, received confirmation that a certain very, very large major insurance company, probably the, if not the biggest, one of the biggest insurance companies, canceled their in-house uh, drone program, not f forgetting about independent adjusters, but the, what they were doing with their staff adjusters, um, they canceled it for the very, very simple reason that, for, for actually two reasons, um, one reason bigger than the other one, right? So the, the, the first reason was is that a lot of people wanted to have a, 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 a like an adjuster at the house who was able to answer questions um, and who was able to um, make coverage decisions and go through the whole process with them because of what they were doing. And this may this is not necessarily a drawback of drones, but really the way they were using them is that they would just send out a, a drone operator to take a, a specific set of pictures, right, and then to leave. Um, and really, and then really the big reason was is because um, I think it was close to 100 percent, almost 100 percent of inspections where the drone was used that they didn't have find damage to the house or to the roof primarily, um, almost every single one of those, 95 out of 100 of those, uh, resulted in a second inspection, which increased the cost, um, decreased trust from the customer and everything else. Um, so while there may be some benefits to using drones in certain situations, those costs are greater than those benefits, right? So the, this insurance, because major insurance company said, you know what? We're not doing that anymore because it's it's really it's more expensive. The juice isn't worth quite worth the squeeze is what they they, they finally decided. So first you know first reason being, insurance companies are are not most especially the major ones aren't really on board with with adjusters using drones. In particular, independent adjusters using drones, right? And there's for the rest of the reasons this this is kind of falls under that category. Um, the 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 second big con that I personally have with using something like a drone is that it doesn't satisfactorily answer the question for me as an adjuster who again it's getting paid by the claim you know so I'm, get, I'm being incentivized to be efficient aka faster right it doesn't satisfactorily answer the question is this tool whether it's a drone or a laser or whatever is it going to make me faster right and make my job easier right while not losing uh, quality. So, have to, that, so those those three things have to kind of line up. Does it make me faster and more efficient? Does it make the work easier for me to do without losing any quality? Right. Problem is with drones is that they it could be argued that they're faster. It may be faster to fly something up over the house than it is to set a ladder up and walk up there and take pictures and yourself, right, and walk over the roof or whatever. But you, I, I think for me the logistics piece with a drone. And I know guys are going to chime in in the comments, and I encourage it um, to say that there's a way around this. But the the best drone that I know of, um, that's really kind of like the most accessible for people, for regular old people like adjusters to buy and use, maybe maybe has a flight time of 30 minutes, right? I don't know of anyone that's it's more than that really. Um, these days, obviously, depends on when you watch this video. That could be up to an hour, right? And it may be that it only takes eight minutes to do a, a roof inspection with the, with the battery, um, flying the drone around the roof, and then you're only using up a part of that. But you still have to have fully charged batteries all the time, and you have to have more than one. You can't just run with one battery, right? So it may not be that you need like seven batteries in there, but you may need to carry two, three, four um, on chargers, charging at all times taking up space in the back your back seat or in some rack or whatever if you've got something set up in your truck um, so there's a logistical piece there right got high winds right maybe provide a challenge to flying the drone um, flying it near restricted airspace you know airports things like that where you know you can be it can be argued that well you know you just call ATC or you just send a ping on your phone or whatever and it'll approve you or what if it doesn't right and that's still extra stuff that I got to do. Um, I think the biggest thing, uh, and this is this is another thing that nobody really seems to talk about, is you have somebody who's unskilled or has a low skill level flying something like a drone, 
right around houses. Um, they have the, if you if you crash the drone into a tree limb, right? If you're, somebody starts talking to you or whatever, you get a gust of wind and it blows it right into the tree. In spite of having little sensors all over it that'll try and keep it out of the, out of things like that, you can still crash it, right? What if you crash it into property and cause damage? What if you crash it into a person or a pet, right? What if you if it crashes into the neighbor's backyard, right? Or into their pool or something like that? Um, I just feel like there's too many things that can go wrong. And maybe there are edge cases. It could be argued certainly that that's, that's, that's the case. But for me, it's, it's an increased risk that um, if I really rely on this tool to do the work that I, you know, I'm trying to do every day and something fails with it, right? Get in the restricted airspace, you know, maybe I'm in Colorado Springs, there's, you know, there's military bases all over the place or, you know, San Antonio or wherever, right? Um, and they're going to reject, you know, my, my call to air traffic control. Um, or you're near like a, like a, like a national park. You know, it's possible that you could, that could be the case. Um, I got in trouble from a park ranger outside of Mount Rainier, uh, I don't know, what the, I can't remember the name of the park. I think that might be it. But the entrance to Mount Rainier to go up in there, we were like three miles outside of it. And I was flying a drone up and you could see the mountain and everything. And park ranger pulled over and we had to talk him out of confiscating my drone because even that was not allowed, right? Which I don't, I didn't get, right? But I had, we hightailed it out of there, right? I mean, we didn't run away from him, but he let us go. Um, it's just too much, right? Um, I don't think... Personally, with the logistics, as logistics aspect and the fact that if I, if I fly a drone up, this is the other thing, if I fly a drone up and I don't see any damage, right, um, then I still have to get on the roof, especially for hail damage. Um, so I'm doing double the work, pretty much. Fly a drone up and there's no damage and it's like, all right, well, I can't deny this one because, you know, Never mind the fact that the insurance companies, nobody's allowing these anyway, um, which kind of cancels out all the rest of these reasons. If, if the insurance companies aren't allowing it anyway, um, then I don't want to do extra work. I don't want to have a bunch of batteries in my back seat. I don't want to have a piece of equipment that could fail. I don't want to have a piece of equipment that I have to call or you know do some sort of a message or whatever. What if I don't have cell service and there's an airport right there? And it's just a million different things. It depends on the weather, right? What if it's... Uh, we got some gusty high winds. What if there's a lot of big trees? Um, just give me my ladder. My ladder costs a fraction of what the drone costs. I can run up up and down that and be done and, and off the property while somebody flying a drone around is, is trying to figure out how to get around that tree or how to like fly it back because the winds are blowing it away. Or you know maybe the, the, the neighbors you know next door have a swimming pool and you got an angry husband with a shotgun. I mean, that's probably a really big edge case, but right? If there's an invasion of privacy issues and things like that, where if you're especially in suburban neighborhoods, personally, I think they're more trouble than they're worth. Um, I, I I know people and I love them that that work for big drone companies. Uh, one in particular that I'm thinking of, um, who probably would have a, a different response to this video, and I would encourage them to reach out to me and we can have a conversation about it and talk about it. And maybe maybe I'm wrong on some of this stuff. Um, but, you know, from, from the, answering that first initial question, is it going to make me faster, make my job easier, and make me at least not detract from my quality, but, but and, and preferably make me better, right, to have a better uh, quality file product, um, a more accurate file, um, the drone doesn't answer those, to, to my satisfaction, doesn't answer those questions because it, it adds things for me to do. Even though it may take less time to do the scope itself, it still adds logistics and things like that, right? Um, and then again, it's a piece of equipment that can be damaged. It can crash it, it can get stolen. I'm on, I'm on the same page with the um, carriers, right? Not every roof that you climb on, especially on a hailstorm, is gonna have hail damage on it. And I don't, I'm not gonna almost, in some cases I may know it, but, but in most cases I'm not gonna know which roof that is. And if I'm flying a drone on every single roof, I'm either going to have to, if I, I'm like, well, I don't see any damage to it, or the, the, the little, maybe it's something that's got a, it's programmed to see hail damage, right? And then there's, there's a company out there, some companies out there that can do this, or say they can do it, um, and it doesn't see damage, that's going to open up for a reinspection, guaranteed, right? 95% chance it's going to open up for a reinspection. I'm going to be back out there climbing that roof anyway. That's a waste of my time, right? Um, if I'm at the house and I, the, the algorithm doesn't say, say that there's any damage, 
I'm gonna be like, you know what, to keep myself from having to do a reinspection, I'm just gonna climb up there and look at it and do it the old fashioned way anyway. Um, never mind the fact that most carriers that I know of, especially the big ones, it's a no no. They don't wanna see drone pictures in your file, right? Which kind of cancels out this pretty much this whole video. So nobody's using them. Don't, if, if you've got, especially if you have limited resources, this is not a place to put your money, right? Don't go and buy yourself a drone. Don't go and spend $1,000 or $2,000 on drone training. Don't go get your part 107. Don't do any of those things when you should be getting more licenses, getting Xactimate certified, um, and getting some good adjuster training, right? Those are the things you need to prioritize. Drone stuff is, even in the, the best of cases, um, is still a very, very limited number. If there's if there's anybody, and you can, I mean, again, jump in the comments and let me know. If anybody's even allowing drones to be used, it's not very many companies. Um, and it's, it's one of those, to me, it's not worth it's just not worth it, right? Um, I'm not against technology, certainly. Um, and I know that people are, are super duper excitable about drones um, and contractors. You guys can use those things all you want, right? Because you don't have the oversight of the carrier and you're not you know, relying on the pictures and the algorithm to say whether there's damage or not. Um, but we are, we have to. And so we have a lot of oversight as adjusters and we have to make the right call on the roof. And if I can't get the right call, uh, if I can't rely on a piece of equipment to give me the right call every time, then I'm not gonna use it, It's the bottom line. Did you know that this is just a clip of a much longer video? To watch the whole show and for a chance to have your questions answered by me, become a member at adjustertvplus.com.